Welcome to episode 23 of the Fab Four podcast, brought to you by Hatcher Auto Sales in Camelsville. Go see Danny and Daniel Hatcher at 5911 Old Lebanon Road, or give them a call at 270-469-6357. I'm your host, Alec Williams, and we're glad you've joined us tonight. If you haven't already, go ahead and give us a like and a follow on our social media accounts. Today, I'm joined by my special guest co-host, Austin Burris, who is the Taylor County Cardinal, or he is the voice of Taylor County Cardinal basketball on Q104. And I'm also joined by the head coaches of Camelsville High School, Coach Keith Atkins, and the coach of Taylor County High School boys basketball team, Montrell Irvin. How are you all tonight? Doing great. Doing good, man. Thanks for having us on. Yes, definitely. Yep. Bird, you want to start out with the first question for the coaches? All right, I will. Uh, obviously, guys, good to be talking to you tonight. And Alex, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, it's been just a crazy year, just a crazy, you know, season. And obviously, a lot of changes. You know, season kind of got pushed back. You know, normally by this time, we're already in kind of the mid-season form we would normally be talking about. Uh, so, kind of, how has that maybe affected your team and maybe changed your approach? And obviously, you've had a limited practice. So, you know, kind of, how does that? As we get ready to start the season this week, you know, how, how are things kind of going? And either one of you can start. Yeah. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Thanks. Um, just with the practice, you know, we, we have um, a week or two of practice, then, you know, it's shut down. So it's almost like you're doing – you're seeing results, you know, as you're going along. Then you shut down like a week or two. Then, like, when you're coming back, it's like starting back all over again. So it was really frustrating to our kids and well as to the coaches. It's kind of like starting up, going back, starting up. So it, it's been a, a hectic year, and it is something that everybody has to deal with. So it's just you just have to um, adapt to what, you know, that this whole COVID deal is. Hey, you know, I agree with everything Coach says. And, you know, this is all new to me, going, you know, changing levels after so many years. Um, you know, I really didn't know what to expect to begin with. And now you, you throw the, the, uh, the pandemic situation in there and, and man, you know, it's, it's, it's all different, you, you know, go, going into the season, if it would have been normal, um, you know, with football, uh, we would have had, and, and I think coach would have been in the same boat. Uh, we would have had very little time to prepare and, and looking at our schedules, we would have been playing each other with, one or two days of practice in a district game, um, you know, if if um, if it was a, a season as normal with our football team still playing, so uh, you know it hasn't been all bad from that perspective. Um, it, it's just um, you know keeping the kids focused, keeping them um, you know ready for anything, and and uh, you know moving forward, you still don't know what to expect. So uh, I think uh, you know obviously the health is going to play the major role in the. Uh, I think the teams that stay the healthiest uh, and and have all their players out there from one game to the next are going to do the do the best. Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, Coach uh, Atkins, this one's for you basically. Um, coming from, of course, being at Camels University, then going down to Life University for a couple seasons, and then going to Lindsay, coming back up to Lindsay, and now you're going back to the high school ranks. What's the main differences that you've seen so far in the two? Well, obviously, you know, you, you know, the biggest thing for me right now is the shot clock. Uh, you know, the, the, not having a shot clock, man, it seems like I, some of our possessions in practice last for days. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I yelled out, I blew the whistle the other day and said, hey, that's a violation of the two-minute shot clock. we got to move <laughs> forward. Uh, so uh, that's the biggest adjustment for me. And then, you know, just the uh, basically the size of, of players, you know, dealing with undersized posts. Uh, or no post at all, um, you know, that's, that's a big change. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's basketball. You know, we, you know we've, we've been faced with situations at every level where you have to adjust your team uh, to, to fit the type of players you have. And, and, you know, everybody says, you're going to keep the same style of play, you know, from college to high school. I don't have a style of play, you know. Uh, even though we recruit the players at the college level, you still really don't know what you're getting till you have them in practice for a couple of weeks. So, you know, we usually adjust the way we play uh, to the to, to the to the personnel that we have. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll 
uh, we'll do a lot of the same things, but but like every year, we're going to adjust to, to what our personnel, uh, personnel is able to do. Burr. I'll say one thing for Coach Atkins. It's a good thing that uh, Mark Fudge is not coaching in high school level no more because if he don't like the no shot clock and no you know, long possessions, then, you know, that would uh, – if you had to play against him. Uh, uh, Derek has known for that for a long time. Uh, Coach Irvin, I'll, I'll ask you a question here. Um, right. Obviously, going from, you know, last year's team, a uh, very, you know, senior-dominated team, a lot of experienced players. Uh, this year, I would say probably a younger team – um, and even some of the older players maybe haven't played for a year or two, now kind of coming back and starting to play a little more. Does that change how – and, Coach Atkins, you can kind of answer this too with, with younger players. Does that change how you have to coach? Um, I know Coach Atkins about kind of the style, you know, you, you have a style of play. But does it change how you have to coach those guys, you know, knowing they don't have maybe as much experience and you're kind of relying on younger players to do things they've never had to do before? Yes, definitely. Uh, especially with the younger kids we got coming in, uh, good, talented younger kids. Uh, but it's different when you go from middle school to a varsity level. The game is faster. The kids are stronger. And a lot of times as coaches, uh, we think they should know what we know already. So it's, it's just a lot of uh, teaching and coaching. And it's just a little thing that sometimes you think they know, but they don't know. Like, you know, we may get – mad or frustrated at them for, you know, not doing, you know, something that we think is so simple, but at the end of the day, they just don't know how to do them things or they haven't learned to do them things. So you, with that, you got to be a little bit more patient with the younger kids and kind of like hold their hands through, through the mistakes and, and let them know that, you know, it's okay. You're going to make mistakes. You know, this is not middle school where, you know, you probably have dominated at the middle school level. Now you're starting all over. You're starting fresh and you got to soak it up like a sponge and learn. And that's a good thing that we have been doing. Uh, we're learning. I tell them they have to learn and learn quick because uh, they're going to be thrown to the fire this year. Okay. Um, or sorry, Keith. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. No, I, I agree with what Coach said. You know, so many times at the college level, um, it, it's more coaching than it is teaching. Uh, you know, guys come pretty much developed, and they, you know, we took so many transfers at the college level that, you know, uh, they, they've been around just about everything you're going to throw at them. But um, at, at this level, Coach is exactly right. You can't take anything for granted. They don't understand typically, you know, why – you want something done or, or how to do something. So uh, it, it is stopping and teaching a lot and, and, and being more patient than you have been in the past. Yep. All right. Um, let's see here. Basically what I was going to say a minute ago is with all the COVID stuff going on for the last several months, what's changed with the practice for you all so far? Keith, you can go ahead if you want. I Okay, um, you, you know, uh, other than trying to, to just uh, ensure the kids' safety and health, uh, you know, not a whole lot. Um, you know, you, 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 you do the typical things, trying to distance them when, when they're out of the drills. Um, you, you know, you um, have, a, have a checklist before practice starts with, you know, temperatures and, and, and you know, making sure that they, they haven't been around someone or feeling any symptoms, things of that nature. Uh, but, but as far as a, a typical practice, uh, we haven't changed a whole lot. Um, you know, we try to incorporate a few more breaks here and there, you know, water breaks and things like that. But, um, you know, it, it just seems like it's, um, you know, little, little housekeeping items like, uh, you know, very few guys in the locker room at one time in a, in a closed space. Um, you know, but, but, you know, from a practice standpoint, we really haven't changed a whole lot that, except just trying to, you know, follow our checklist and, and guidelines and make sure we're keeping those guys healthy. Go, Jeremy. Yeah, coach hit it on the dot. It's, it's just those little things, a lot of housekeeping things, checking temperatures, writing names down, uh, make sure these kids are safe. Um, I mean, he just hit it on the dot. Like I said, as far as practices, um, it's basically the same practice. Um, I know one thing we do is uh, if the kids are kind of out and looking, they'll put their mask back up, uh, you know, just little things. But as far as just – the everyday grind is it's all the same. Coach, how are you gonna do with the mask in a game? I'm not gonna do well, coach, at all. 
It's going to be down a little bit where I can talk so they can hear me. <laughs> I'm, that's not gonna sure. I'm, I'm trying that's to gonna work be on it. That's the toughest part. Yeah, I'm Definitely. working on it. <laughs> Burr? Hey guys, obviously, you know, COVID, I mean, I know there's some rules, just like you mentioned with the mask, you know, coaches having to wear masks. But uh, I know there's a lot of kind of restrictions and rules that have been changed. And one, and I've still not figured out why they changed this, uh, is that there's no jump ball anymore. <laughs> and obviously, I mean, that, that's an adjustment you're going to have to – I mean, I know it's not necessarily a big adjustment, but you, it's, it's an adjustment. I know there's other maybe COVID rules that I don't know about. Maybe you all could elaborate on some of those and kind of how you're having to adjust. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Uh, you know, the, the, with the jump ball, it, I really don't get that. Uh, you got kids that's going to be bumping all game, breathing on each other all game. I mean, they're sweating their bodies. And to be honest, the jump ball is probably the safe, safest uh, thing in the whole game because you're not touching each other. And so with that, that is that just kind of blows my mind. Uh, other than that, like Coach said before, like wearing the mask during the game, you know, you yell not plays, you know, kids probably not really understanding what you're saying. So you, you have to maybe pull your mask down at times. So that's going to be a big adjustment of them just not hearing what the call is. Uh, but other than that, um, it's going to be about the same. But those two are big, big issues. I, th I think one of the biggest things we're going to have to adjust to is the, the size of the crowds. Uh, you know, uh, you're not going to have a crazy, um, you yeah. know, Campbellsville, Taylor County atmosphere like you had in the past. Uh, you know, some of, some of the traditional rivals like Greene County, Adair, Marion, Taylor, um, you just, you know, it's, uh, you're going to have to find a way to generate some, some, uh, some energy and, and, and atmosphere in there without, without the fans doing it. Uh, the jump ball thing, I don't understand that as well. I, I don't really think it comes into play much, uh, unless I'm wrong. Uh, until maybe like there's an overtime. I mean, you know, you know, it, it, you yeah. know, if you haven't had many jump balls or whatever, or, you know, you're an alternating possession. You know, uh, is it the team that got it first would get it first in an overtime? I think. I'm still not for sure on that. But yeah, I, I, don't, I yeah, think that's the you. case. So I, you know, at, at the college level, you know, we we never had. You know, it seemed like I never won a tip. I, so I was always <laughs> like, we we always deferred to the second half anyway. So, right. uh, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I think the crowd's the biggest thing, and just uh, uh, you know, going into gyms, and you may, you know, like here at, uh, at at Campbellsville, there's limited space. You know, uh, we'll have to use some some creative thing, uh, you know, ideas for for opponents' dressing room, dressing rooms and things like that. But uh, you know, it's just things. It's it's the world we live in. We're gonna have to adjust to all those things. Coach, uh, Atkins, you brought it up just a minute ago. A lot of questions that are people or just the casual fans asking is, how can I watch a game? How, can I come to a game? What's the uh, guidelines going on with Campbell High School and then Coach Irvin at Terry County? Yeah, yeah, you know, we're. Uh, I think it's going to be different just about everywhere you go. Um, you know, we're we're at home. Uh, you know, our first couple of games, but you know, looking down at our middle school program, you know, they're going to Hart County. Um, on um, uh, uh, tomorrow night or Monday night. And, um, you know, I think they allowed us 50 tickets. So, you know, you have to be uh, fair and, and prudent with those and, and make sure, you know, maybe some upperclassmen are getting a little bit more uh, than the others. But uh, uh, I think it's going to be different from every, every, from one school to another. And um, I think, you know, uh, you know, you're going to have to, I think some people stream their home games. That's going to become very important for, for grandparents and, and uh, you know, larger families that can't get everybody into a game. Uh, you know, you've got Huddle, I know, uh, is, is one, one resource. Uh, the, the High School Federation, I think, is, is another resource that will stream the games. So uh, I think there will be a lot more people that can see them. They just won't be at those games. They won't be there live. Coach Irvin. Yeah, uh, for us, um, I know we have a thing called Go Fans that uh, the, the the fans can go and order tickets on. Uh, I'm not really sure right now how many fans we can have in our building. I think it's like 700 maybe. It's a bigger gym. Uh, it's going to be different, like I said, for every school. Every school is going to have their own guidelines. Uh, that's another big thing. You have to read every guidelines from every school. Sometimes you get three tickets. Sometimes you get four tickets. Uh, sometimes you may only get two tickets. 
So each each spot, each gym is going to be different um, that you go to. So you, you really got to be prepared, advance before the games, you know, a week or so advance, so you can communicate with your fan crowd or, or with your parents, especially uh, what you can and cannot do for each school. Burke. I guess, uh, you know, talking about kind of some of the changes and things, and I guess one of the biggest changes and definitely going to affect both of you um, here pretty soon, because I guess we, don't, we play each other, what, January 29th? Is that right? Yeah. Alec? Uh, the 19th, 26th, something like that. 26th, yeah, it was somewhere in there. But, you know, the district this year, uh, the seating, if I'm not mistaken, and you all correct me if I am, was tailoring counts that are playing playing each other twice, but we're only playing Marion and there once, and it's the first game that we play against each other, and then those two games, that determines the seating. So it's just three games instead of six. Um, obviously, that's a big change, and I'm sure that's something you've heard, y'all both very interested in and kind of preparing for, and just maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think that, you know, once again, this is all new to me, uh, but, um, you know, we, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I have to go back. I think we have all three games at home uh, for district uh, purposes. Uh, so you know that that's obviously you know I don't know if it's an advantage, but you know on on paper it appears to be. Um, and you would like for those things to play themselves out over a home and home uh, mm-hmm. situation. Um, and uh, it just seems like uh, you know this year. Um, you know, and sometimes you ask certain people, they'll tell you you're lucky if you can get three of them in. So um, I guess it is what it is. Um, uh, you know, once again, it's new to me, but uh, obviously in, in, a, in a perfect situation, I think playing it out over six games uh, would be better than, than the, the current situation of three. Yeah, definitely sure. playing. Definitely playing a, a team twice, you know, is something that's better. Uh, playing one game, you only got one shot. You know, you got to make that shot count, especially playing three uh, great teams. Um, you have one time to do it. Uh, you have one time to prepare for it. And, I mean, just like a district game, you, 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 there is no tomorrow, you know. So you got to play each game as, you know, you, you're fighting for that number one seed. And with, with the three other schools being so close together as far as uh, competitiveness, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough district, and you got to bring it every night for them three nights to get a good seat. Yeah, like we were saying that that matchup with the Cardinals and the Eagles will be January twenty second at Campbellsville High School, so that's uh that's coming up here soon actually, <laughs> just a few couple weeks yeah. away. But um, my question is, who's – I mean, Coach Atkins, you're new to Campbellsville High School on the coaching aspect, but you have a leadership – or not leadership. You have older guys there where Coach Irvin has younger guys. Just talk about your key returners you have coming back, I guess is the best way to say this. Yeah, you know, uh, we are blessed to have a big senior class. It's a good senior class. Um, you know uh, – and this this is completely from the from the outside looking in up until this point, you know, the, the, it's different for them because over the last couple of years they they've they've had a, a really really good player uh, in in Malachi Corley who who kind of dominated the basketball and and rightfully so he's a talented kid that that uh, that could do a lot of things and and um, uh, so, so you know even though it's a senior a good senior class and it is a big senior class. Um, you know, you got to have somebody that that steps up into that role of the scorer. Uh, somebody that uh, you know, in years past, there was no no question where the ball was going late in games. There was no question who you needed to have a big game to be successful. And um, and and now we've got to figure out who that go-to guy is. Um, you know, it's um, uh, with this class has been through a lot together. You know, had some success all the way from middle school on up uh, in a lot of sports. Um, you know, you look at it, and you've got two uh, two kids in this class that have already signed Division One for baseball. Uh, one kid that's, uh, I think, the class of Reggie was the Class A football player of the year. So it's it's a really good group of athletes. Um, but you know, it, even though they're seniors, 
um, it's kind of like starting over because we're doing things so differently than they have in the past. Uh, you know, Anthony did an incredible job. Coach Davis before him. Um, the, these guys are blessed to have learned the game and 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 being brought along by by two great coaches. Uh, and now, you know, we just do things a little bit differently. So it's been slow from that aspect. But at least, you know, we can, re, you know, step back and rely on that game experience that those guys do have. Coach Aaron. Yes, like you say, you know, we got a young group coming back. Uh, we do have, you know, some great leaders on upperclassmen. You know, Connor Wise, uh, Carson Watson, you know, we're going to rely on them a whole lot to really bring our younger kids up and bring them up in the right way. Um, uh, they have been leading there probably ever since they was in middle school, so they're great leaders. Uh, they're here. They've seen some great leaders, so they're kind of going by that as well. Um, and just uh, just being that leader, uh, kind of weather the storm, you know, when, when it's getting on bad times, you down five or six, you know, they can be patient, uh, tell the younger kids kind of what to do and guide them in the way they need to, to be guided. You know, as coaches, you can only do so much on the, on the coaching line, but those players out there, the older players that you really rely on to calm the younger kids down or calm the team down and, and really get them into sets and, and things that we need to do uh, as a team to be successful. Second part to that question is, uh, who's some of these top newcomers coming in for both your programs? Keith, you want to go ahead first? Uh, yeah, you know, once again, they're all newcomers to me, but, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, just that senior class with, with uh, Cameron Smith, Aaron Hash, uh, you know, Reggie Thomas, uh, uh, Tristan Faulkner, uh, you know, guys that have played a lot of minutes the last several years. Um, you know, it seems like this guy that I'm about to, you know, mention is, seems like he's a newcomer. He's missed so many games in the past couple of years with some injuries, but John Orberson will make a big difference for us uh, from a physicality standpoint. Uh, you know, he's a good you know, good skill level type player, but but also just a physical uh, body for us. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, Chase Hoard, um, you know, played some minutes last year on, on a good team. Um, so the experience he gained last year will be valuable. And then and I'm really excited about, uh, you know, we call him little man, uh, DeAndre Weathers, um, you know, I think could could really be a special player looking down the road. A uh, kid that will play a lot for us early in his career. Um, you know, physically, I think he's ready to do it. Uh, you know, learning how to play at this level, like Coach was talking about earlier, it's a big difference from playing, you know, middle school or, or whatever, you know, uh, he's played in the last couple of years. Um, so, you know, the, the, the newcomer, I think he's the one that stands out and a guy that, uh, you know, will throw a lot on him early in his career. And, and I think, once again, physically, athletically, he's ready to do it. It's just learning how to play at this level. And, and you know, uh, Coach mentioned this earlier, too. It just seems like the younger guys, they, they played with, with so much freedom. And, and, you know, it was okay to make mistakes, at, you know, in lower levels. But now, all of a sudden, those mistakes are magnified. And, and we just got to teach him bad shot, good shot. You know, we got to teach him good decision, bad decision, you know, things like that. Um, uh, but when when, uh, when he figures all that out, he's got a chance to be a good player. Coach Irvin? Well, the newcomers, uh, it's going to be basically our whole team. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we can start from the, the, the freshman group. Uh, like I said, that there's uh, quite a bit of them. You got Caden Smith, uh, big physical player inside, outside. Lake and Lines. Uh, he's going to be a great guard for us, energy guy, uh, high, strong guy. Uh, Jackson Wise is someone we're going to really depend on for years to come. Smart, IQ, uh, can shoot the ball. He's going to be a leader, uh, especially in times of the past. Um, Keaton Clemens, uh, inside guy, can stretch you out with the three ball. Uh, very high IQ. Uh, Guys, there's so many. Uh, sophomore class have uh, Camden Anderson that's going to play a good role for us. Nice body. Uh, he can beat you down low or, you know, from the outside with the nice dribbles. Uh, I'm normally leave somebody else. Uh, so many. 
um, junior class uh, this year that really didn't get a lot of playing time. You have Zane um, Parker, it's gonna be an inside guys. Uh, one of the one of the athletes we have um, in our programs. You have Coslo Hunter, big body, physical body, football body that's gonna bang uh, really hard. He's gonna be a, a great addition to us. Um, senior group, uh, Dalton Nunn really haven't played a lot of varsity minutes. Uh, high, strong energy guy. Uh, we're going to depend on him uh, quite a bit to come in and get the hustle points. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a team for, uh, you know, I apologize if I miss a kid, but uh, it's just, just going to be, you know, this one of those years, like Coach said, you just basically go out there, get some minutes, uh, play how they play, and we'll go from there. Burr. All right, I guess this is my last question, I guess. Uh, and those, kind of both of you, uh, just in one word or maybe just a short little phrase, what would you say the biggest key for your team to have success? Obviously, you know, again, it's been a crazy year. A lot of things, you know, like, a lot of weird stuff's happened this last year and, and going from last season to this season. Um, but, you know, in all this craziness, you know, what's the, what's the one thing that you need to have to have success? The biggest key. Health. That that's that's big. Um, like I said, for everybody's healthy. Um, as far as the basketball point, uh, we have to rebound the ball and take care of the ball. Uh, that's our two biggest. I know you want a one word, but that's really our two big one is <laughs> we have to stay healthy, we have to rebound the ball and then we have to take care of the ball. Last couple things I've got is uh, who is your support staff, your assistant coaches, everything like that. Because uh, we all know without them, you can't get it done. Or we can't get it done, but it just – it takes a lot of work. He's really plugging for himself there, Montreal. Hey, I really was, I, and I just – I got you. Kinda, I thought you were going to ask it, Bird. I didn't want to ask ahead, myself. <laughs> uh, well, we got uh, Coach Parks. He'll be doing the uh, varsity assistant job. Uh, coach Tung, which will be our JV coach. Uh, he came with me uh, when I came over from Marion County. And, of course, we have the GOAT, uh, Mr. Williams, Coach Williams, uh, that will be doing our freshman this year. So we we have a great support staff. Uh, like you said, with without a great support staff, um, you know, it's it's hard to run a great program uh, without those guys. And each and every day, you know, we as head coaches really appreciate the 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 hours they put in, the unlimited hours they put in. You know, they don't get noticed as much, but they do way more than what they uh, really are that people think that they do. Um, uh, I will have uh, Zach Allender. Um, uh, will be my, my varsity assistant. Um, he's a guy that uh, obviously I'm really familiar with, was an All-American a couple of years for me at Campbellsville. Uh, you know, he brings head coaching experience uh, uh, over the last couple of years to, to the table. And uh, just a guy that, that definitely knows, you know, what I want done and how I want it done. And and he's an extension of me. And, and man, just to have another guy that's got head coaching experience, I'm blessed to have Zach, uh, Zach in that role. Um, Chris uh, Scoop Smith um, uh, will be our JV coach. Uh, he's been with the program for a couple of years now. Uh, he's another one of my former players uh, at Campbellsville. And um, uh, he's a guy that just has a, a great relationship with, with all these returning guys uh, that gives us, uh, uh, you know, some continuity from the past uh, before I got here into, into the current. And uh, blessed to have him. And then uh, Alan Costley. Uh, who played at uh, Lindsey Wilson. I coached against Allen a couple of times when I was at Life, uh, so very much familiar with him. Uh, he's helped with our middle school programs the last few years, and now we're kind of bringing him up uh, up to the high school level. And, um, you know, just a guy that I admire so much, uh, uh, you know, as a player, and now getting getting an opportunity to work with him uh, in, a, in a coach uh, relationship. So blessed to have those guys and uh, – um, you know, coach is right. Those guys do so much for your program that, that goes unnoticed. And, 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 you know, just, you know, every time you get a chance to give them a shout out, it, it, uh, it, it's really worth it. 
Last thing I got before we end it is uh, what's your first week look like? We're here. It's here. Uh, most teams will tip off either Monday or Tuesday night. Coach uh, Atkins, start, you can start out first. What's your first week look like? Uh, uh, Monday night, we've got Hart County uh, at home. Uh, uh, don't know a whole lot about them, to be honest. I don't know a whole lot about most of them, but uh, uh, I know they um, lost a couple of really good scores from last year. So it'd be interesting to see. You know, I, I think the first week you, you've really got to rely on what you do. Uh, since there's not really a lot of info out there on current teams uh, and, and just adjust to what teams may try to do to you. Uh, uh, Tuesday night, we've got Evangel Christian uh, out, of, out of Louisville. Uh, goodness knows what, what type of personnel will roll in here with them. You know, Brandon Bender, former Louisville player, has, uh, has become the athletic director there. And, you know, he's connected uh, all over the, the Northern Hemisphere. So, uh, you know, the, there's the, it's a private school, so you know we'll see what what shows up there. Uh, and then Friday at Greene County, and Saturday Rock Castle County at home. So four games up front here early and, and on us. Coach Irvin, good. Uh, we start out Tuesday night at Russell. You know they have two two uh, big guys. It's one of the probably best in their region, Big Melbourne and Big Ham. Uh, great basketball players. Uh, so that's, that's uh, we'll have our handfuls with them, especially on the road at a different region. That'll be tough. Uh, we're supposed to play Thursday, but that has been postponed due to uh, COVID reasons. And then we play uh, E-Town, which, you know, is the number one team in the region. They have everybody back, uh, made it to the state tournament, unfortunately got cut off, and I know they're hungry especially going for football, going to the state championship game. So they're riding a high right now. And, you know, they're probably pretty mad that they didn't get to play that state tournament. So they're looking for another region title. Uh, so we have them the second game of the week. So, you know, like I said, we're going to get thrown in the fire early. You know, it's just the way to be. And, and we'll go from there. So just very excited about it. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I have. Uh... Do any of y'all, Burr, coach, or either one of the coaches, do y'all have any final comments before we close it out? Not really. Just looking forward to get going, and uh, hopefully it can uh, it can flow from here as normal as possible. Definitely. This one is a good, safe year, good competitive year. You know, and best of luck to every team in the fifth region, in the 20th district. Uh, just want to say good luck to all of them. I just want to wish you know both both these coaches good luck. And like Coach Irvin said, everybody in the fifth region, you know, hopefully we can have a safe year, uh, get as many games in as we can, you know, and uh, hope everything can get back to some sense of normalcy. And uh, you mentioned the Russell County game on Tuesday night. Uh, it's Curl Boy doubleheader, 6.30 and 8. That game will be on the radio for Tater County fans. I know you, a lot of people can't come to the game, but you can listen. Uh, normally we're on Q104. I think on Tuesday we're actually going to be on 106.7 The Rock. Uh, UK's playing that night, so we, we'll be on the alternate station. But we'll be uh, covering that game, and we'll also be covering the game at E-Town on Friday night uh, at 7.30. So be sure to tune in for those games if you can't make it out. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks for having us on. I got one last thing to say. One last thing to say. My very first time coaching – I got under Coach Atkins. I was his graduate assistant, and that was on the best thing ever. You know, I really appreciate that. My very first time in college, uh, he was the head coach. Uh, after I graduated, I came back to be a graduate assistant. And you know what? You know, I, I learned a lot. You know, that's why I first started out. And a lot of things he did, it was just awesome. Learned a lot from him. And then from there, uh, went to Louisville and, you know, kind of did my thing. But, uh I really appreciate Coach Atkins for giving me the opportunity to be around those fellas and, and see the, the the background of, you know, what a college coach goes through. And I'll tell you, it's a grind every day, every day. It's, it's summertime. Uh, you have no time off. And I, and I really respect that, you know, of him. You know, he's a great guy. And, you know, he, he's the one that really got me into this uh, coaching. So I really appreciate that, Coach Atkins. Well, I appreciate that, Montreal, and you know, the privilege is all mine, and the honor is all mine. And and you know, I wish I wish some people could could see some games uh, 
You know, when, yeah. when Montreal finished up playing at CU, some of the teams we had there, I was still an assistant those last couple of years. And, man, we, we could, uh, you know, the talent level back in the Mid-South Conference back then was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Some of the teams that he played on to finish his career uh, were, were just uh, unbelievable basketball teams uh, for what people call the small college. And, uh, uh, like I said, you know, Montreal was easy to coach and, and just privileged that he was a part of my staff. Thanks, Wait, thanks, Trail. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, we'd like to thank Coach Atkins of Council High School and Coach Irvin from Taylor County High School on for coming on the show today. And, of course, uh, Austin Burris for coming and being my special guest co-host today as the rest of the Fab 3, 4, whatever we got. They're, they're too busy to do anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we wish these guys the best of luck this season. And we would like to thank everyone for watching and listening to the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Hatcher Auto Sales Fab Four Podcast.